giant molecule structures part 3 so in this uh, part 3 we are going to discuss about graphite one of the allotropes of carbon so um, here this is the arrangement of carbon atoms in one layer for a graphite okay so um, here this uh, we have hexagonal structure of carbons okay where uh, it forms or it has a strong covalent bond between carbon and also carbon this is in one layer and uh, for the graphite actually the arrangement of the layers okay is like this okay in this diagram where we have the strong covalent bond between the carbon okay and we have a weak force or usually this one uh, uh, the van der Waals okay the weak force between the layers okay so uh, we have interaction between first layer and second layer second layer with third layer okay so uh, each carbon atom is joined by um, three other carbon atoms okay not four but three only three uh, atoms by strong covalence bond and uh, this all these uh, carbons are actually arranged in rings of six atoms so um, graphite is made up of par parallel layers or sheets okay of carbon atoms arranged in hexagon and as I mentioned before each carbon atom has a coordination number of three instead of four okay all right uh, which means that it is bonded to three other carbon atoms. Okay, so uh, the geometry is trigonal planar with the CCC bond angles of 120. In diamond, we have uh, each carbon has four coordination number, and they form a tetrahedral with the bond angles of 109.5. But it is different with the graphite where each carbon atom has only three coordination number with a trigonal planar geometry and the angles here is 120 degree. So graphite also has a layer structure which is quite um, difficult to draw convincingly in three dimension if we compare it to the diamond. Okay, so uh, the diagram here, both of these, uh, shows the arrangement of the atoms in each layer. So this is first layer, second layer, third layer and so on. And the way the layers are spaced. Okay. So we have covalence bond in each layer. And we have van der Waal forces okay, between our form. Okay. Um, between first layer, second layer and third layer. This is the van der Waal forces. Alright, so um, each carbon atom usually uses uh, three of its electron, okay, to form simple bond to its three close neighbors instead of four, okay. So uh, here, let me draw to you. So this is what we usually draw the Lewis structure of carbon. Okay, with a four um, valence electron. Okay, but in graphite, only three. So, for example, I take this one. One, two, three. Only three atom. Uh, sorry, only three electrons are being used compared to uh, the normal carbon, and this is where we have the free electron. Okay, so uh, this leaf a fourth electron in the bonding level so this is the fourth one okay and these spare spare electrons in each a carbon atom uh, become delocalized over the whole of the sheet of atom in one layer so um, the hexagonal layers of graphite are actually around 3.41 angstrom apart and held by weak uh, attractive forces which we call it as van der Waal forces and these weak forces are easily broken which explain the slippery yeah the slippery or soft nature of 
graphite. That's why graphite is being used as pencil in the in pencil, okay. And so it can move uh, freely, okay. This enable graphite to be used as solid lubricants as well as pencils, okay. So what are the physical properties of graphite? So first one, it has high melting point. That's similar to the diamond. It has a soft and slippery feel. That, okay. And it's used in pencil and as a dry lubricant for things like locks. Okay. So um, other than that, it has a lower density than diamond. And last but not least, it is actually in, insoluble in water and also organic solvent. And last but not least, it can conduct electricity. Okay. It is actually the only only non-metal that conducts electricity. Why? Because of the spare electrons in each atom has here. Okay, right. So the reason here, each at a carbon atom has one electron that it is not used in bonding. Okay. So in this diagram, this is the. Uh, spare electrons okay so the delocalized electron are free to move throughout the sheets okay so if a piece of graphite is connected into a circuit electrons can fall one uh, fall off one end of the end of the sheet and can be replaced with new ones at the end at the other end so these free electrons okay um, is free to move and it can it it is actually able to conduct electricity. So, what are the uses of the graphite? Uh, first one as a pencil lead made of graphite and also clay, and then um, second one as a lubricant for hot machines. Okay, because uh, this graphite does not decompose um, at high temp temperatures. So guys, I leave you with this uh, question and also um, this question and also another question for you. Okay, uh, and then um, please ignore the second question. Okay, please answer only one uh, question one. So we will discuss this uh, practice during our virtual class and that's all for uh, part 3 and also that's all for the giant um, molecule structures. I hope to see you guys again and that's all for today. Thank you. Bye.